Hey friends, hey family, this is Veronica at Veronica Says. Thank you for joining me for my 80s week. It's Sunday of a week where I'm gonna be featuring every day a scent that I either wore or that reminds me of the 80s and associating it with some song choices. I'm here very barefaced for you today with nothing but moisturizer on. We're in my bathroom where I usually get ready. Hope that's okay with you. If you would like to stay for the makeup portion of the video, I am gonna be showing you what I do on what I call my Simple Sundays, which is where I have just a handful of products that I use to do something to my face so I look a little bit fancier than what you're looking at here, but I don't use all of the products in the world, right? So I hope you'll stay for that. Uh, and if not, let's get right into the fragrance portion. So, the 80s. Oh fond memories. I am an 80s kid through and through. I was born in 1975 and so most of my memories are past the age of five years old into the 1980s decade and I have great memories of both growing up in the Bronx uh, in New York City and going to school, elementary school, middle school, and then I left for high school and went somewhere else into a different environment and have some great memories of that that I may do in like a late 80s, 90s week for you. But the first fragrance that comes to mind for me when I think of the 80s is without a doubt, <laughs> this Chantilly by I think the house is pronounced Dana, D-A-N-A. -A. I have the Eau de Toilette and it looked just like this. The bottle looked just like this in the 80s and I had a huge bottle like this and I went through the entire thing. This is an Eau de Toilette concentration. I don't know whether it has been reformulated or not, but I can tell you that this version that I have now is weaker than what I remember from the 80s. The memory that I associate with Chantilly is this. I was in middle school and I was in a marching band. I was a majorette in a marching band and then I was the drum major <laughs> for the band. And we practiced in our school gymnasium. So I would go to school very early and by 7.30 we were in the gym and we were marching through the gym, like pretending that it was a parade route. And I would douse myself in this Chantilly and in another one that I'm gonna show on another day. I don't wanna spoil that. Um, and just, you couldn't tell me that I didn't smell great. However, I think looking back, I probably was heavily offensive. <laughs> this is, and this concentration isn't quite as strong as I remember, but the version that I remember was nuclear status. And I'm telling you, I sprayed head to toe with this sucker. I went to school. I thought I smelled very pretty, very romantic, as you can see from the bottle um, and the, the detailing here with the sticker. It's supposed to be kind of like a romantic fragrance. And it was that time period in middle school when you have puppy love, you think you're falling in love with people, you don't know what you're doing. And so I have lots of memories of this sort of thing with this scent. So this is like one of those scents that reminds me of early puppy love romance where your feelings are all over the place, you're hurting people's feelings and you're getting your feelings hurt quickly. <laughs> now, we started in middle school, we were very young when we started um, thinking that we had a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Thankfully, uh, nowadays, our kids are waiting longer for that. Thank you, good Lord in heaven. But anyway, that's what this reminds me of, marching in that gym in close quarters with other people with this scent doused on me and thinking that I smelled romantic and pretty, but probably smelling very offensive and very cheap and very tacky. This is an inexpensive fragrance. I think I got this three ouncer for under 30 bucks, but typically in that day it would have been sold very cheaply. I am not sure if this is, you know, made in mass anymore, um, but I did manage to find a bottle online. So let me tell you a little bit about this scent. It's considered a warm, spicy citrus scent with some florals. It was originally launched in 1941. So this is an older fragrance, but to me, this is an 80s scent through and through. It has got so many notes in here, citruses, benzoin, vanilla, leather. I don't pick up any leather in this, but sandalwood, bergamot, alang alang, spicy notes, oak moss, jasmine, musk, neroli, cloves even, orange blossom, tonka bean, rose, and fruity notes. 
I will say, even though this is the Eau de Toilette concentration, I don't know that there's an Eau de Parfum. I suspect that's what I had, either that or there was some older formulation that I had. It smells like the original on first spray, but then dissipates quickly, at least to my nose. We'll see how the rest of the family receives it and whether they're smelling me heavily later on. But the blast of memories that this brings back, it is heavy citrus, heavy orangey, but I read it more as like a floral romantic fragrance when I was in the 80s. So that's Chantilly by Dana and because it reminds me of like puppy love and thinking you had feelings for people right you don't know what you're doing at that age the songs that I associate with this fragrance are the great 80s love ballads so I'm thinking of like total eclipse of the heart remember that by Bonnie Tyler that came out in 1983 I'll sing you just a couple of lines for karaoke purposes I don't think I can really sing, but I'm here to entertain you and make a fool of myself this week for your, <laughs> for your amusement. Once upon a time, I was falling in love. Now I'm only falling apart. There's nothing I can do. It's a total eclipse of the heart. Once upon a time, there was light in my life, but now there's only love in the dark. Nothing I can say. It's a total eclipse of the heart. Great karaoke song. If you dare to try to hit all of those crazy notes that Bonnie Tyler had. Listen, she's a powerhouse singer. She had that really raspy, smoky voice. And it was like on point. Love that song. It's still like a fave to this day. It comes on the radio and not, or radio. We don't listen to the radio anymore, do we? <laughs> it comes on XM or on Spotify or whatever you listen to. And I immediately go back to that time period, right? Turn around, bright eyes. Love it. I also think of other ballads like, um, I want to know what love is. Remember that? I want you to show me. Isn't that foreigner? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's another one. I think of Peter Cetera, Glory of Love. I am a man who will fight for your honor. I'll be the hero that you've been dreaming of. Ah, so that is Chantilly's tragic romantic puppy love from middle school overdone floral citrusy scent that is just way over the top no one needs this in their life but boy does it bring back some great memories all right so that's my fragrance hope you'll join me tomorrow for another fragrance from the 80s now we're going to get into the makeup portion so if you just came for perfume or the scent of the day thank you i'll see you in the next video and for the rest of you that want to stay let's get into the look of the day i'm going to do just a little mini tutorial here I am not a makeup artist. I don't pretend to be. I just really love makeup. I don't have the best techniques, but I have learned from the best here on YouTube. Some of my favorites, by the way, are Mel Thompson. Check her out. She used to be a makeup artist for MAC and just does the most outrageously beautiful big eye looks. There's a woman whose name, of course, I can't remember. I think it's Alexandra Anelli. Anelli. She does, uh, she's a Pat McGrath makeup artist that has this little pixie haircut. That's how you can check her out from the thumbnails, little blonde pixie haircut, beautiful big eyes, shows you how to manipulate your face with makeup, fantastic. Wayne Goss, another makeup artist out in the UK, absolutely fantastic. And then one of my faves uh, in New York is Kinky Sweat. She's called Kinky Sweat because she talks about her kinky hair and her sweat life. She is a fitness instructor and a contortionist. I don't know that she'd call herself a contortionist, but she does check her out on Instagram. You'll see what I'm saying. She does all of this sort of body flexing and whatever, but she does fantastic makeup tutorials and is so fun. So let's get the headband on and let's get rolling, my friends. Let's do some simple Sunday makeup. So let me start by saying that the most important thing for makeup is to get your foundation, your base right. Now, you know that I self-tan, I talk about that. I have spent years in the sun in my youth. I need a little sip of tea, one second. 
years in the sun, like just baking and trying to get, you know, golden. And so I do have sun damage and I am 46. So you see that I have some texture on my forehead, especially on my cheeks. Um, and then there's a little bit of like sagging and whatever going on here. So probably about 46, maybe about 10, 10 ish years ago, I really started to pay attention to my skin and heavily moisturizing cleansing correctly and moisturizing. So I just wanna talk really quickly about a morning routine that I do. Maybe you'll get something out of it. Would love to hear about your morning routine and what you think works. But um, first of all, you know, at night, I definitely cleanse my face, do a serum and heavily moisturize. We can talk about that another day. But in the mornings here, of course, when I get into the shower, I do a couple of things. I use a gentle cleanser. I think you can see it up there in the box, the CeraVe uh, cleanser um, to get any other product off from the night before, even though I've cleansed heavily the night before, you know, and then also get the moisturizer off from the night before because I use a heavy emollient moisturizer in the evening. When I'm done with that, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to share that I do use like a Clarisonic. This is the Mia. Maya, Mia, and I have the head on it that is for exfoliating. That's all it does, right? It vibrates, it doesn't spin, it just vibrates and it helps to get the debris or whatever you got going on out from your pores with your um, cleanser. So that's that. And then I always use a gentle exfoliator. Quick hint, some may find this controversial and think it's too much. You can always use a little bit of baking soda either in your cleanser or mixed with water as a gentle exfoliator. Don't go too crazy because it can be harsh, but water it down so it's like a little pasty and just do like a little cleanse over your face, a little exfoliation rather, if you wanna do that. But I like to use an enzymatic cleanser. This is from Amore Pacific um, and it's a powder and I just do like a little dime of it wet it down and use it on my face, particularly around my nose and here where, you know, skin cells tend to, to build up and flake a little bit just to get that off. So I do that. And then when I come out of the shower, you know, I self tan. So one of my favorite products is this Saint Tropez um, self tan bronzing water face mist. I like this because it doesn't leave any streaks. I never have any problems with it. I just spray about 10 inches from my face. I do my face, my ears, and sort of this whole section here that you can see like on video conference. You know I don't do my hands. We are different colors here. We're gonna roll with it. But sometimes if I am, you know, in the summertime or whatever, I will do my whole arm. But it's light, it's non-greasy, it dries fast, I love it. I got backup bottles of that. And you know, if I have backup bottles, that means I love it. And then I go in with what I think is a really nice moisturizer that's kind of heavy, but not super emollient. And that is the Paula's Choice, Paula's Choice Skin Restoring Moisturizer. This has SPF 50. Now, it's a rainy day here in Central Virginia. You can't see the skylights the way I have the camera, but it doesn't matter. Every single day I put this on and I find that it keeps my skin fairly supple and protects me from any rays of sun that I may get either from skylights, sitting near the window where I work and so forth. All right, so that's that. Let's keep moving along. Today is Simple Sunday, so I do wanna do just a really quick uh, makeup look for you guys. And um, let me start by saying that before I do my makeup, after I moisturize, well, order of operations, cleanser, enzymatic, exfoliator, come out of the shower, put my moisturizer, not my moisturizer, sorry, I'm lying. I do the face tanning first, give that a minute to dry down, and then I go in with my moisturizer. So that's my prep, okay? And then you can also do a face primer before you go in with your makeup. I didn't put one on today and I'm not going to, but an example is this Lancome. This is the UB, UB, UV Expert Aqua Gel Defense 50. If you want a little bit of extra moisture or something, um, a primer to prep your face for what you're gonna do. I always though go in with something on my lips as I am doing my makeup so that my lips are prepped for whatever the lip product is gonna be at the end. Today I am using just the Aquaphor Healing Ointment. I have found that this is one of the best and cheapest lip balm kind of things. I do it at night, I do it in the morning, I do it whenever I feel like I need to. For years and years and years, I did Vaseline. Trouble with Vaseline, and it's still great, 
is that um, it doesn't really like ever sink in. So it's just like a superficial moisture that you feel. Whereas this, I feel like actually sinks in. I don't know the chemistry behind that. If I'm wrong and I sound crazy, let me know. But I think it works for me. So anyway, let's do that. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick look today. It might not be quick because I'm talking about the products, but quick relative to what I do every day of the week, which is just like a whole, you know, glam face. And yesterday, in that video yesterday, I did talk about this blue Becca anti-fatigue under eye primer. And I wanted to go back and do that. The lighting yesterday and the way that I applied my makeup made my under eyes look kind of gross. So you probably thought I was lying. She says this is a miracle product <laughs> and her eyes look dry as the Sahara Desert. Nice try, Veronica. We don't believe you. But let's do this again. First of all, I always say do a little bit of extra moisture under your eyes, which can be if your primer is moisturizing, you can use that or you can go in with your other moisturizer. So do your moisturizer, sit still, right? And then go in and do an extra little tiny layer. You want to make sure that it sets in and let the second layer then sit in. And I'm talking to my ladies who have issues with their under eyes getting dry and crepey during the day. Yesterday wasn't a good example, so please forgive that for that video. But let's let's make it right today so you see what I'm saying. So you get your little extra moisturizer under there. You give it some time to set in. I'm going to go on and go in for the purposes of this video, okay? So then get your little primer. You can use this or you can, there are other under eye primers. I just like this one. And I just do like a little twirl around like that. And literally just do one of these numbers work it in really well to help it settle into the fine lines and help spackle that's what you're doing you're pretty much spackling your fine lines under your eyes okay and then here is a concealer technique that i learned from i think his name is robert welsh here on youtube listen another amazing makeup artist so fun to watch absolutely amazing youtube content robert welsh check him out he's a uk um based makeup artist. Fantastic. But I learned a, a concealer technique from him that I never forgot. And it makes all the difference for me because I would, I was one of those people that followed the younger YouTubers and I would do like that big old, you know, triangle under the eyes and then wonder why I looked crazy. It's because I'm older. I can't do that sort of stuff. So I'm, I have the liquid camouflage high coverage concealer from Catrice, Catrice. It's a 12 hour concealer, it says. So just as a close up, you see, I do have some fine lines under my eyes. Maybe not as pronounced, of course, as they're gonna be in 10 or 15 years, but I do have some. And I like to minimize those. So he says to do just an ever so slight dash on the inner and the outer area. And I always do this section here because I had a little discoloration there. And then I use my fingers. And the reason that I'm using my ring fingers based on his advice, and actually maybe it was Wayne Goss that said this, is because it's hard to apply heavy pressure with these fingers. And so you're gonna be very light and gentle then in tapping it out. So let me do one eye at a time before I trip myself up here and y'all stop watching me because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. What the heck I'm doing, I'm not supposed to. And because it's Sunday and I wanna keep it simple, I'm also gonna take this onto my eyelid and into my eye area to use as a base for my eyeshadow. Concealer is not ideal for an eyelid or eyeshadow primer, but it works in a pinch. And if you're not worried about it, then lasting the rest of the day. I take the rest of my concealer, anything that's left over, and I put it on my nose to help with the oil and to help fill in a little bit fill in a little bit of the pores on my nose which are you know larger my cheek and my nose pores are larger than the rest of my face but again tap it out like i always say and if that's not enough for you you can always go in with the second or third layer but just do it very very slowly take your time make sure you're blending it in nicely and that you don't have any harsh lines on the corners so that lightened up just a little bit, good enough for a Sunday. I could go in for a second layer, but let's keep it quick and simple for this video. You get the idea. 
And if you have a really high coverage concealer, like the Too Faced Sculpting one, that will, it's smooth, it's creamy, and you can really make a difference in terms of covering any shadows or whatever that you may have. It's nothing wrong for me to show a little bit of shadow still through. I still get, you know, some sort of light coverage to help with it, right? So that it's not as accentuated. Okay, so that's that. I am going to take my rings off first of all so I can get into this with you guys. And I think I've talked about this on my channel before. It's the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. This is a tinted hydrating gel cream. This has a little SPF in it. That's not why I use it. I use it because I like the look that it gives me. And it's easy. It's like an extra layer of moisture, except it also gives you some coverage. Not a lot. It's not like a full coverage foundation. But this is in the color Desert. 6.5 and let me show you how much I do here this is a great option when you don't want to do a whole full face of makeup but you want a little bit of coverage to help you out I start off with like that amount and I just use my hands and I apply it like a moisturizer and I like that it gives me a little bit of extra coverage and what it does because it has color in it is it helps redirect light away from your face or rather helps light bounce around your face differently is probably a better way to say that because this does have a little bit of sheen in it as you can see so hopefully the camera's picking up that it just made just the slightest difference enough for it to not look like your bare skin but still look like your bare skin you know what i'm saying i'm gonna go in with just a little bit more to get a little bit extra so that's from Bare Minerals, and they have them in all sorts of colors. Really wide color range, really fantastic product. I like the way that it looks on my skin without having to do a full face of caked on foundation. So that's what we have. Un momento, por favor, I need my towel. Okay. All right, and then let's do just a little tiny bit of powdering, and I wanna show you a brush that I love for this. One second, because I was not prepared. This is the Wayne Goss, I think it's called an airbrush. It's sold on Beautylish. I think that's the only place his products are sold. I really like this brush a lot for doing under the eyes and just a quick sort of touch up around the face, the T-zone. The T-zone is this, that's your T-zone the oily zone of your face. And you can also include your cheeks because that gets oily too. But a great product if you're in a pinch is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish. This is what happens when you're 46 years old. You gotta pull back from stuff and you gotta look at it like this <laughs> so I don't have my glasses on. The Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I have it in medium and I have it in light. Here is what the medium looks like. And I just take the airbrush and do a little bit like this, tap off, and just go in for just a little extra assurance down the nose. I have a very oily nose, oily cheeks. It just helps a little bit. That doesn't mean I'm not going to get oily during the day. It just helps. It helps it not get crazy so fast. And I do a little bit on my chin. The reason I like this powder is because it's finely milled. So it doesn't look cakey. Like the powder that I had on yesterday, which was this Becca powder, because I was featuring all Becca products, was a little bit thicker. And that's part of the reason that like my under eyes and everything looks so, you know, crepey or whatever yesterday, okay? Just to be transparent. But I just do one of these numbers. And sometimes I'll do a little bit on the eyes there just to help the concealer, if I'm using concealer, set down. So that's it. You could go in with a big fluffy brush if you want to, but keep it simple, keep it quick. Let's then go into the eyeshadow for today. I'm gonna use the Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette. You can use any palette like this. There are CoverGirl palettes, there are Maybelline palettes. A lot of lines have little handy palettes like this that have four or five shadows, sometimes three, where if you wanna do an easy look and you don't wanna be stumped looking at your eyeshadow palette, wondering what do I wanna do with my look today, try something like this. Let me swatch these for you quickly so you see what we're working with. I'm an amateur, so stay with me. <laughs> this color is called Soil. Is that right? She named a color soil. She did. 
All right, so this is soil. Okay, like a bronze, uh, gold, coppery color there. This color is called Sienna, which I love that name. That's nice. I may do that as like an all over color. The next one is Lumino. Lumino. Nice, very nice, very creamy. I think you all know I love Natasha Denona shadows. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to pronounce it coin. It's Q U O I N, Quan, Quinn, coin. No sé. I don't know. That's very nice. Very bronzy color there. And the final color is the brown color in here, which is called bronzage, which is a repeat, if I'm not mistaken, of another color in another palette. Because I remember looking at bronzage for Natasha Denona. So it's this brown color. So here's a nice, look at the difference in color, you guys. <laughs> that is thanks to Saint Tropez. Okay. Um, so let's go in with a simple look. I'm going to start with maybe like a bigger, fluffier brush. Um, this is just like a cheap Amazon brush. It's called, the, the line is called Bestope. And I got like a whole set. They're fine. Nothing wrong with them. I'm going into this lighter color, tapping off the excess. And here's one thing I was looking at and on Alexandra Anelli's, Anella, and you remember her YouTube channel where she talks about putting your crease shadow higher on your eye versus right in the crease area if you want to lift and expand. So let me try that a little bit and see. I'm doing this in the camera, so it's a bit goofy. Not like the usual mirror setup here. One day I'll get more sophisticated and have a better setup, but for now, here's what we're dealing with. I like to sort of just zhuzh it out, something I learned from Kinky Sweat, just to take it out to the edge of your eyebrow. I haven't filled in eyebrows yet, I'll do that in just a little bit. I usually bring my eyebrow out to here if I'm using a pencil. I'm not doing that today, I'm just gonna use like a little bit of extra gel to fill in a little color. So, and something I learned from Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, of course his name is escaping me now, um, Mario, and I can never get his last name right, he talks about bringing the darker color in here, which is something that in the 90s we would have never thought of. Mary Kay was not there yet. <laughs> okay, so I think that's enough for that eye. Let's do the same thing over here. First of all, I want to flatten out whatever has gathered there. Okay. But a nice soft color for a day like a Sunday works really nicely in like an overall, like a blowout shade, which is what I'm, I'm, I think I'm doing right now. That's what I would call this. I'm kind of just blowing out the color on my eyes with this in a subtle way. Okay, a little bit more over here. And then I think I wanna go on with the darker color just to give it some life over in this section. So that is the brown color here, which is bronzage. Is that right? Did I read you guys the colors all wrong? I think I did. I read you guys the colors backward. This is soil, this is bronzage. See what I'm saying? This is why your girl Veronica should maybe rethink these live videos. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm getting a little too dramatic with that for a Sunday, but. So I tried to go in light. I went in a little too heavy, but I'm just kind of blowing it out with the technique. You always want to hold your brush down. Don't do this because you're applying too harshly like I just did. Hold it back and then blend. Okay, let me go back into soil. The color that I read to you was something else. I called it bronzage. Sorry, Natasha. Okay. If I wanted to be a little bit more dramatic, I would take this darker color in here and darken that up even more. But I wanted to keep it light, but still create a little bit of dimension on the eye, which is what I think I'm doing here. Am I doing it? Is that working? 
Okay, I'm getting a little crazy. So when I get a little crazy, because I told y'all I'm not a makeup artist, I use my fingers and I do one of these numbers. It helps to blend the darker color and the lighter color together there and also helps to take the sharp edges off of the sides. I do believe you can be a little bit messy on the sides. Some people like to tape it off and have a sharp line and that's fine. It just depends what kind of look you're going for. I'm not going for that you know, whole thing today, so that doesn't really matter to me. I think that I want to use, let me try this again. I called these names all wrong. This is Sienna. I think I want to use that on my lid. So let's try that and see how that goes. I'm going in with my finger and I am, even though I went in with my finger, I still tapped it on the edge of the sink to get the excess off. Because nobody has time for excess shadow to be flaking all over their face all day. Okay. Good. Yeah. Do the other eye. Tap, tap. Here we go. This is quiet. Should I be playing music? I wish I could play the 80s music for you guys, but I know I'll get a copyright strike because I haven't figured out how to use copyrighted music yet. Do you know? Tell me. Love to hear what you got in mind. So that's pretty simple for the day, right? It's a nice like smoky look, nothing spectacular. If you want to get a little bit crazy, you can go in with like something like this Luminoso. In fact, let's just do that. This is all, you know, one brush, one finger kind of thing. And just do that right there in the center of the eye. Boom. Completely elevated the look with very little effort. And then you just want to blend it out a little bit with your finger so there aren't harsh lines. And that's what we're going with today. I'm going to then use a smudger brush. Let me go in with this, which is, here we go with my old lady eye look. The Morphe M213. <laughs> Morphe M213. I hate when YouTubers do this, but here I am doing it. It's the Morphe M213. Camera focus. Y'all know how that goes. <laughs> and I'm taking some of that soil color. And I'm going in under, I'm doing this with my phone camera, so hopefully this doesn't turn out goofy. Just to do a little bit of liner here on the bottom. If you want to keep your eyes more innocent and simple, don't do that. Just don't go in with any liner, just get your mascara on and keep going. If you want something a little smokier, this number over here helps with that. So I like to put a little bit here on the outer third. I'm making a mess with my powders. And here I do like to hold the brush closer because I am trying to be more precise. See how using shadow just gives you a nice soft liner effect without getting too crazy. Now for those of you that are more experienced, you can take your liner out like to follow the line of your eye out. If you like that sort of cat eye effect, I've never mastered that. I kind of suck at that, so I'm not even gonna try it. And I don't know that I like it. So there, I'm just kidding. It looks really good on some people. I just don't know what I'm doing, you guys. So that's that. See how that just deepened it up just a little bit? And I'm also going to, I'm gonna clean off the brush and I'm going to use the Luminoso, Lumino, Lumino on the inner corner for a little bit of highlight. Just like that. Now, if you're going to be in person with people, this might be a little much. If you're trying to take pictures or if you're trying to get on video conference uh, and you want just a little bit of extra brightening up in your eyes, that could work. And then I take the extra and just do it right there at the arch of the the eyebrow to give that a little bit of extra pop coming forward. Oh, I just put too much on. But there's an easy solution for that, which is, guess what? Your fingers. Just do one of these numbers. And then I like to do that to kind of help them play together. Um, and if you want to get a little bit extra, you can then go in with the lighter color which I totally misread the name to you guys. That is the Quan, Quoin, Quinn, that name. It's lighter and you can run that all along the bottom pretty freely. 
to just deepen that part of the look up. You may wonder, well, if you just went in and did all that stuff with the concealer, why would you want to do that? And it still helps. I mean, even though your concealer has sort of lightened up the area, um, it has done like a color correction. So then you're going back in with the color you want to emphasize as part of the eye look. So that's what that looks like. Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette, super quick. Let's go in with um, the eye mascara. Is that what it's called? <laughs> the mascara. And I always do an eyelash curler. No matter what, even on days when all you want to do is like moisturizer and your uh, lip gloss, go in with your curler, get your eyelashes curled up, and put some mascara on. And it'll help lift. I have the Shiseido one. It works really well with the shape of my eyes, which is kind of almond shaped. I had the Revlon one. It was too curved and kind of weird. I'm gonna try to go quick here because I know y'all have been watching me for a super duper long time. And if you're still around, I'm shocked and I love you. So <laughs> I'm using the Lancome uh, Idole Mascara and it has this kind of brush, which I don't love. So well, the reason I'm looking down is because I'm taking the extra off of the end. I hate that. And real quick tip, um, I hope I don't mess this up on camera, you guys. Instead of brushing up, blink down onto it. So let me see if I can do this on. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't do what I just did. Oh God, let's try it again. Okay, that was so goofy. I knew that was gonna happen. Okay, okay, God, God be with me. That's what I'm talking about. Place it and then blink onto it. And you wanna go in at the base and then you can fan out just a little bit. The reason that I say that, even though I just messed up on camera for y'all, is anytime, because I have pretty long eyelashes, anytime I try to do it the other way, just go up first, I inevitably get stuff on the top area here and then it, it makes me sad. This is really hard to do on camera. Okay. Whew, we made it. Other eye. Let's go here. Now, if I wasn't stopping to explain these products and all that, I could probably get through this routine in 15 minutes. Does that seem like a long time to you guys for a simple Sunday? My normal makeup routine, I would say, is about 45 minutes. I know that's a lot, but I watch YouTube while I'm doing it, and I enjoy myself, and it's just kind of like me time for the day. I love it. Drink my coffee, listen to the news, whatever it is that I need to do in the morning. Okay. Now, I won't do this on camera, but I do let my eyelashes dry, and then I actually go back in with the... I just did it again. Charlotte... If you're watching, remember we talked about this, Charlotte Ross? <laughs> um, I do go back in with my eyelash curler. If you do mess up like that really bad, because it happens to me maybe like once a month, so this is my once a month time, I do sometimes, I'll clean it up immediately. I know people say, wait, let it dry, and then come in with a spoolie and scratch it off. Sometimes that works if it's just like a little point, but when you have like a whole swath like that, I like to take care of that right away so that it doesn't dry down. And then I may go in like with a little tiny bit of concealer if I'm really worried about it. Right now it looks fine, I'm not worried. Let's keep going. So for eyebrows, I'm not gonna do like the whole sculpting thing that I usually do. I wanna go in quickly with a tinted brow mascara. This one is from NYX and it is in the color Espresso. Again, you want to take like the little bit, the extra. So my camera cut me off. <laughs> How embarrassing. It pretty much said, hey, you've been talking too long. We have too much footage and you've reached the maximum limit. So, 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 so sorry. I had to come in and record a second new fresh little video bit just to close out. So I didn't leave you all so abruptly and I won't go on, but I did use that uh, brow tinted gel to fill in a little bit of color on the eyebrows and do a little bit of extension on the edge not very much usually during the week I take a, a pencil and I actually fill in some of this area 
and pull the end of the eyebrow out. I did use a little bit of lip liner. I used the Marc Jacobs Eau Coco lip liner just to give my color, my lips rather, some color underneath. And then went in with this Pat McGrath Bronze Temptation Lip Gloss, which I don't know is the best choice for today. In fact, let's change it out, hang on. Okay, so I'm back with just the lip liner on, the Okoko lip liner, and I'm gonna change out the color because that lip gloss wasn't really working with this look. If you're gonna do something a little shimmery on the lid, uh, maybe tone down the color and whatever on your lips. It just depends on what you're going for for that day. So I am going to use the Wet n Wild I don't know. This is called Liquid Katsu, and it's also high shine, so maybe not the best choice. All right, let me try another one. Hang on. Okay, this time I'm serious. I came back with the L'Oreal Colorish uh, lipstick. This is the color 984 Ultra Nude, and it's matte. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay, I think that's a better look. A lot simpler, it lets the eyes be the sort of star of the show, which you can't really see in this crazy lighting that I have in the bathroom, but it doesn't take away from the eye look. Really quick hint for those of you that are always getting lipstick on your teeth. I keep in my lipstick drawer, which is down here with 948 lipsticks. I'm kidding, but I have a lot. In the mornings, I use a lot of sugar packets for my coffee and tea. This is fake sugar, but you get what I'm saying, the little packets. Instead of throwing them away, I use them to do that at the end. Great use of something before you throw it away, and it really does take the excess off so you don't get any on your lips, I mean on your teeth rather, later on. That's the video for the day. Hope you subscribe. Thanks so much for joining. Please, uh, We'll see you again tomorrow for more of the 80s week. If you have any 80s songs that you want to talk about and any 80s perfumes, please drop them in the comments below so that we can all enjoy and reminisce with you. Have a great day.